Okay, well, welcome back to our third module lecture that we're continuing. We're talking about statistical learning. And in this um, part of the lecture, we're just finishing up with what we can be doing with Bayes' theorem. And I showed you a couple of graphs that were giving you some, some idea of how this would actually work. Um, I thought this was a, a good type of way of where we can be coming up with a um, true versus an estimate. So we're trying to come up with these types of curves. And I know we talked about some material here that was getting a little bit complicated with a couple of these areas. Um, but I just wanted to show you those, those figures that maybe might give you a little bit of a motivation as we're finishing up dealing with the, the math. So we um, are finishing now talking about the general base theorem and how we can be leveraging that. Um, and now we're going to be talking about the K nearest neighbor type of a classifier. So basically we're trying to look at the K points that are nearest to a particular um, one that we're trying to evaluate and then come up with a distance matrix based on that data. So the classification of X is the class label and the majority of K neighbors. The neighbors have equal vote and the class having the, the maximum number of votes among the K neighbors is chosen. The ties are broken arbitrarily or a weighted vote is taken. The K is is odd number to minimize the ties. And that's what we want to, to ensure. So the key component is the distance and similarity function that is chosen based on the application and nature of the, the data. So what is the number of neighbors? It is determined from the validation set and there is no right number. The, the numbers depend on the, the distribution of data and it is dependent on the problem. So the validation set is different from a training set of data. We're using this to help us to come up with the statistical methods of how we're going to be choosing one versus the other as we're doing our machine learning. So for classification of discriminant function, the classification decisions are based on X may be stated using a set of explicitly defined discriminant functions. And the classifier assigns a pattern with feature vectors X to class yk such as the corresponding value gk is the largest. And so that's um, ultimately what we're trying to, to, to come up with. And what we're going to be focusing on a lot in, in this class is binary classification. Um, so in the case of a binary classification, in, instead of two discriminant functions applied, it's more common to find a single function and to use the following type of decision rule. It's either that if you find it's greater than it's one or the other. So it's just like a, a coin toss, it's one or the other. And so that can simplify our problem. So just to give some, some figures, here is um, another couple of slides from um, Sugiyama. This is dealing with classification regression. So first here, we're looking at regression. And so regression is focused on the math we're trying to come up with an estimate of what it actually is there. So F hat versus the F actual. So that's regression. And classification is something we're going to be getting into more and more. And so he, here we have three different types of um, uh, classes, class one, class two, and class three. And we're trying to separate those out. That is a, a very useful thing. Um, here is an example of clusters. And so instead of just having um, a division between them, you can see that they're by the nature of the data, they cluster together. And at times you'll have these types of outliers that will, will show up. Um, okay, for linear regression, regression is used to predict the value of the response variables from attribute variables. The, the variables are continuous numeric numbers. The, the model fits a linear function between the output variable and the input variables. So the output y hat is a linear combination of the attributes. And we're showing that here uh, with the, the equation. The goal is to find the difference between the predicted y hat and the actual. 
Um, so we're having an analytical process to go through this. The method is choose n plus one coefficients to minimize re residual sum of the squares of these differences. And so we're trying to do as best we can to minimize the difference for in, in many cases as possible. The performance criteria is thus the sum of error squares, the, the residual sum of error, error squares is given by this equation here. Um, we have a couple more details here that we can be thinking about for gradient, gradient descent optimization schemes, the optimization method, the gradient descent method used for minimizing the task. Um, ch the changes of the weights are made according to the following algorithm. Um, the approach for the iterative steps is there's two things. There's the batch method, which uses all the data in one shot, and the on line methods that go in steps. So for the batch method, um, the kth iteration of the uh, means of the case presentation of the data set, the gradient is calculated across the entire set of, of training patterns. For the online, the kth iteration step after a single data pair is presented, that this method shares almost all good features of the recursive least square algorithm with reduced computational complexity. Um, the logistic regression for classification of the task, the probability is a number between one, zero, and one, examining the chance of a particular outcome occurring. Odds is the, is the ra ratio of the probability of an occur outcome occurring to the probability of it not occurring, number going from zero to infinity. And, and logit is uh, the log uh, of odds going from minus infinity to plus infinity. For the binary classification problem, it is assumed here that the log odds is, is given by this equation. Um, so we have that. The probability of x belonging to a class one is calculated from the logic, logistic function. And the logistic function never gets smaller than zero and never gets larger than one. And so we have those equations that are listed there. Okay, finishing up with just um, two more charts. For the maximum likelihood um, estimate, the MLE, and I showed a, um, an illustration of this from Sugiyami, Su Sugiyama um, um, just a few minutes ago. For a given set of observations, um, the proposed model is given by, by this. The, the, the likelihood function is defined here and the log logistic regression model may be expressed in terms of G X um, W with the equation there. To get the maximum likelihood update equation for the gradient ascent, um, we use this equation here. So I know that's a lot of information that I covered very quickly, especially in this last part but there's a lot more detailed development in the textbook and I would refer you to there to, to track along with that. Thank you very much.